found these questions that are on bias and also drug ad so just which is great and I was just looking at this question right here and I'm so sorry I marked it here and now it's not disappearing so I'm just gonna make it selection bias for now and we're gonna go over this together a randomized parallel group controlled clinical trial evaluates the effectiveness of an anti-inflammatory intervention as treatment for neuropathic pain following spinal cord injury. So now we're looking at the effectiveness of a medication in an RCT. And participants with varying levels and severities of spinal cord injury are randomly assigned to either a 24-week anti-inflammatory diet treatment or a control group. Primary outcomes consist of changes in pain score. Prelim analysis reveals a significant reduction in pain scores in the treatment group, which is 0.03, so significant. There was a significant reduction in pain scores among non-obese subjects and a non-significant increase in pain scores among obese subjects. Which of the following best describes these differences? Okay, so this is interesting because you have these two groups, one of treatment and one of placebo or control. And... In the treatment group, you see an overall decrease in pain. However, within that treatment group, you have two subgroups now, which are varied by uh, weight. And in the obese patients, you see an increase in pain. And in non-obese patients, you see a decrease in pain. So why is that? What? Uh, so obesity here is what, basically, right? Obesity is the variable. Is that a confounder or is that an effect modifier? Or is this because it's straight up not biased? Because selection bias, <clears throat> sorry, selection bias doesn't seem to happen in randomized control study where participants are carefully selected, as you can see by this sentence. And it's also not a randomized failure. You see a statistically significant difference in the treatment versus control, and it's a randomized study. Hawthorne effect makes no sense. So not that. But it's between confounding and effect modification. Now, First things first, whenever you see uh, an intervention or a treatment that has a varying effect within the treatment group based on age, sex, height, race, then it's always because of effect modification. It's not confounding. Because now you have something in that treatment group, a variable, which is causing the effect of the treatment or drug to vary between the different participants. And it's always like, it's not between one obese person and like the other obese, other non-obese person is fine. Or like, you know, it's not an individual based characteristic like smoking. This is straight up. All obese people saw a non-significant increase and all non-obese saw a decrease. So this is because obesity might be modifying our intervention here and for this we have to do a stratified analysis where we will compare non-obese versus obese and look at the diet intervention again what is confounding though confounding is basically let's say <clears throat> you have two groups and um, you want to see the relationship between coffee consumption and lung cancer okay and your results one group drinks a lot of coffee, other groups think, other group drinks no coffee. And your results come out and you conclude that coffee drinking leads to lung cancer. But what you did not take into account was that 90% of those coffee drinkers also like to smoke. So smoking there becomes a confounder because smoking has a direct relationship to lung cancer here. It's causing the outcome, but also has a relationship to the exposure, exposure. Because many people, they just like smoking and co drinking coffee together, you know. that That's an association that you cannot deny. So confounding has to have a relationship with both of them. And if you take out the smokers from the group and re-evaluate your, uh, your groups, you will have a different answer. You will have no association maybe between coffee and lung cancer. But every time you do this test with obese patients, you have you will get modification in the uh, magnitude of the treatment because magnitude is affected in effect modification and confounding just straight up says that there will be no 
association right in the treatment group itself. It doesn't really go into the subgroups. So that's a big difference. And I hope that's clear. If it's not, please put that in the comments and I can just give a better example. It's just, it's hard for me to like um, speak without like a script. So sometimes it gets messy, but I can definitely explain that again. So just let me know. And I think this is for sure effect modification. And yes, it is. And we can see here that effect modification occurs when the magnitude or direction of the effect on the outcome varies depending on the effect modifier. And here they give aspirin use as a rye in. So yeah, again, so aspirin is associated with rye syndrome in children but not adults because age there modifies the effect of aspirin on the outcome. This is not a confounder. A confounder would be, have they given an explanation? I guess no. But you can just pause the video here and read this explanation. It's, it's really good. And if you want me to go over it again, please let me know that as well.